And coming up, the job market for San Angelo could see improvements after the first of the year. John Thomas has that story. And we'll let you know why gasoline prices are once again on the rise. Those stories next on News at Live at 10. From News 8, the Concho Valley's first choice for news, weather, and sports. This is Live at 10 with David Wagner, Carolyn McEnroe, Ray Green with weather, and Hector Ledesma with sports. Well, good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. A wedding ring lost in the September 11th terrorist attacks is returned. We'll have that story in just a moment, but first here's Ray Green with the first look at our weather, right? Thanks a lot, guys. Well, our weather's going to be changing just a bit toward the uh, weekend. Right now, though, we're going to continue with cool nights to cold nights and mild afternoons. Let's check out our town and country neighborhood weather in Sterling City, where it's currently 40 degrees, the high today 54, the morning low 30, which is fairly uh, normal to where we should be this time of year. And our wake-up weather shows you that we've got this going on for in the morning as you wake up. A few clouds, but mostly fair. Sunrise at 740. Temperatures will be seasonal around 29 or 30, so a light freeze once again in the area. Much more on that weekend weather a little bit later. Here's the news desk. Thanks a lot, Ray. Many cities in Texas are seeing companies lay off thousands of workers, but San Angelo and Tom Green County officials are optimistic about the area's job outlook over the next year. John Thomas has more. The jobless rate in Tom Green County is at 2.8 percent, and for just San Angelo, it's at 3 percent. Other parts of the state, though, are not so fortunate. Down in Presidio, they have a 20.4 percent unemployment rate. Up in northeast Texas, in Paris, Texas, they're running 11.2. There are pockets of Texas that have extremely high unemployment rates, but we here in the Concho Valley are, are fortunate to be at the 2 to 3 to 4 percent rate. One area that is growing is what's known as the transaction services industry. We're using uh, the telephones and the lines out and in and, uh, and a computer screen and, and software to, uh, to basically do customer service over the phone. And San Angelo has both the workforce and uh, and really a great reputation and ability to do that type of work and uh, do it in a in an efficient and effective manner. Blue Cross Blue Shield has several hundred workers. Diversified Collection Services is coming to town. They'll hire about 200 folks to start up. And Cytel has 1,200 workers and wants to hire more. Um, we're looking to add on at least 300 more employees by the end of January to keep up with um, certain projects that we have. Right now we have a Verizon, we have Capital One contracts. We're looking for both English and Spanish speakers. Um, if they can communicate both in English and Spanish, you know, we definitely encourage them to apply. And while the 2.8 percent unemployment rate is a good year, 2002 could be better. We had more uh, community visits by companies outside of San Angelo in 2001 than we'd had in any previous year. So we think that what's happening here is a lot of industry is looking at San Angelo. They're not, they're not overlooking us. We're, we're getting their attention, uh, both in terms of a, a good size community, a good quality of life, and a good place to do business. And I, we're pretty positive on uh, 2002. I'm John Thomas, KLST News. And if you're interested in a job at Cytel, you can go by their offices at Sol Ross and Loop 306 to apply. After the first of the year, if you are a teenager, getting a driver's license will be a little more complicated. The first phase of the new graduated driver license program will require that drivers hold an instruction permit or hardship license for six months before being given a provisional driver's license. Also, the adult required to be in the car with them during that time must not only be licensed, but at least 21 years old. In phase two, there are more laws restricting who can ride with a provisional driver. They will not be able to have more than one unrelated person under the age of 21 in their vehicle. If it is a family member, they can have as many family members taking kids to school or whatever. But if it is a non-family member, they can have no more than one under the age of 21 in the vehicle with them at any time. Provisional drivers will not be allowed to drive between midnight and 5 in the morning unless it is for work, school, or a medical emergency. Right now, 46 other states have some form of graduated driver license systems. Today, construction workers continued work clearing out the old IGA grocery store in Southwest Plaza as they get ready to renovate the building. And instead of trashing everything, they're trying to give it away. Joel Fox has more. Renovation work is about to begin at the old Food Basket IGA supermarket building in the Southwest Plaza Shopping Center. But that work can't start until the contents of the old grocery store, which closed about two years ago, have been cleared out. We have no use for it. 
we're going to be doing construction on the new facility that's here, but yet uh, we've got to get all this stuff out before we can give them a hard cost on, the, on doing it. But instead of taking it all to the landfill, the construction company contacted San Angelo Friends of the Environment, and they discovered a treasure trove of recyclables. As it turns out, almost everything that's in here can be recycled. There's an awful lot of metal, and there's pegboard, and either we can reuse it or we can recycle it. But the Safe Recycling Center isn't the only one picking through the pile. Other nonprofit organizations have been notified, and several already have been by to take a few items, including the adult daycare and the Salvation Army. It's a way to get rid of it. It's, it's good stuff, but uh, we have no use for it. And at the rate things are going, that shouldn't be difficult. Joel Fox, KLST News. And a manager with MRO Properties, which owns Southwest Plaza Shopping Center, confirms negotiations are underway about what new facility might locate in the old supermarket building, but says it's too early to say what it will be. The price of gasoline is on the rise again in San Angelo. In fact, it's risen as much as 10 cents a gallon over the past few days. OPEC leaders are meeting tomorrow, and they will be talking about cutting world production levels by 2 million barrels a day, and that will bring up the price per barrel by several dollars. The man in charge of fuel marketing for town and country says gasoline prices ebb and flow with OPEC production levels. See, I think see the price of gas go back up some. I don't expect it to... Uh... Uh, have any major jumps in the next few months, but uh, <clears throat> the price of oil was down around $18 a barrel, and now it's up over $21 a barrel, and uh, OPEC would like to see it stay in the $20 to $23 a barrel range. And he says he is expecting a little more of an increase after the 1st of January. For the next two weeks, you can take your live Christmas trees to the San Angelo Recycling Center on Knickerbocker Road to be recycled into mulch. San Angelo's Friends of the Environment collects the trees and sends them off to be ground into mulch. The center's director, Sharon Skrbanek, says people have dropped off only a handful of trees so far this year. Last year, they collected seven and a half tons. Now, you can drop off your tree between 8 in the morning and 5 in the evening, Monday through Saturday, from now until Friday, January 11th. They'll be closed New Year's Day. A San Francisco woman who lost her husband in the Pennsylvania plane crash September 11th has received a special Christmas present, as unlikely as it is priceless. Searchers at the crash site found her husband's wedding ring. Juliet Goodrich has the story. It's really a miracle um, for me. It's just a, it's an answer to prayer, um, and uh, I am just so thankful to have it. Dorothy Garcia had one wish after her husband died in the September 11th crash of Flight 93 in Pennsylvania. It was to have her husband's wedding ring returned. FBI agents told her it probably couldn't be found in the field where the hijacked plane went down. Then one day, she got a call. She said, Mrs. Garcia, I have some news for you. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. Andy Garcia's wedding ring had been found. FBI agents hand-delivered it to her just days before Christmas in a velvet pouch. I just took it right out of the pouch and put it right on my, my hand and it fits perfectly. It's inscribed, it says, all my love, and then the date, 8269. They were married 32 years, have three children and two grandchildren, one of them born after September 11th. For Dorothy, the ring is a symbol of their love and a symbol of courage. It's, to me, it's a piece of all of the passengers of Flight 93 because they were all heroes. And it just symbolizes to me their courage and their heroism. Dorothy says mm -hmm. the ring is the best present she could have had on this first Christmas without her husband. Fits perfectly on my middle finger. He's the center of my life and my family. And it just, it belongs right there. And still ahead for you tonight, the mayor who is Time Magazine's Man of the Year is stepping down from office next week. And we'll have this in Medical Breakthroughs. A new drug offers a calming alternative for Parkinson's patients. That coming up on Medical Breakthroughs.
Six people died today after being hit by a van in Manhattan's Herald Square. Thousands of pedestrians pass through the area near Macy's department store on 34th Street every day. Police ordered the driver of a commercial van to move it because it was double parked in front of a bus stop. The van abruptly jumped forward, striking several pedestrians and pinning some of them between the van and the back of a bus. New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani said today he has drawn his strength from the people of New York City since becoming mayor eight years ago. Giuliani delivered his farewell speech today near the side of the World Trade Center Tower's collapse. Terry Okita has the story. Rudy Giuliani delivered his goodbye address at an historic church once attended by George Washington. St. Paul's Chapel was decked out with signs and banners and hundreds of the faithful hanging on his every word. Although I have to leave you as the mayor uh, soon, I resume the much more honorable title of citizen. Citizen of New York and citizen of the United States. The pre-revolutionary church is in an area that cemented Giuliani's legacy, one block from the site of the former World Trade Center, now known as Ground Zero. How are you? Good work, sir. Thank you. Good work. It was these images that stuck in the minds of Americans during the worst terrorist attack in our country's history. His leadership, following September 11th, took Giuliani from mayor to Time Magazine's Person of the Year. There's no question that the only reason that I was selected as the Person of the Year is that... Um, People of New York are the, are the people of the year. Mayor has seen record approval numbers in the last four months. But because of term limits, he could not run again in November. However, most New Yorkers say if they could have, they would have voted for him. In the wake of the 9-11 events, it's really helped out the city a lot. And I personally wish he could stay another term. Giuliani hands over the reins to mayor-elect Michael Bloomberg at 12.01 on January 1st. Right now, he has no plans for the future, but says he will push for a memorial site where the World Trade Center once stood. Terry Okita, CBS News, New York. U.S. military officials and leaders in Afghanistan and Pakistan all have different things to say about where Osama bin Laden is staying and if he's alive. Today, Arab TV station Al Jazeera aired another video of bin Laden. Jim Acosta has the story. The Arabic satellite TV station Al Jazeera released its unedited version of the new Osama bin Laden videotape. In this latest airing, bin Laden praises the September 11th hijackers. Bin Laden also rails against U.S. policies in Israel and says America's collapse is imminent. It's another attempt, analysts say, to provoke Muslim anger and ignite a holy war. On bin Laden's whereabouts, there are new leads from Afghanistan's government. The Afghan Defense Ministry says bin Laden is hiding in Pakistan under the protection of the radical Islamic group, the JUI. The group's leaders seen here labeled the statement a political gimmick. Contradicting his own defense officials, Afghanistan's interim prime minister, Hamid Karzai, is less sure about bin Laden's current position. We don't know. Wherever he is, we should arrest him. Karzai is coming under pressure from some tribal leaders. He's reportedly asked for a pause in airstrikes and ordered an investigation into last week's U.S. bombing of a convoy that possibly carried Afghans who support the new government. The U.S. still insists the convoy was being driven by Taliban warriors. As for bin Laden, if he's in Pakistan, the Pentagon believes U.S. forces can catch him there. We have found the Pakistani government to just be very cooperative in so many things that I have trouble believing it would, it would be a problem at all. The Pentagon is planning to hold Taliban and al-Qaeda detainees close to America's shores at the Guantanamo Naval Base in Cuba. So far, some 45 prisoners are in U.S. custody and are being questioned about where bin Laden is hiding. Jim Acosta, CBS News, Washington. Not long after the terrorist attacks came the anthrax scares in Florida, New York, and Washington, D.C. We continue our look at the stories of the year tonight from Gretchen Carlson. It was an eerie scene. Employees at ABC News in New York, at American Media in Boca Raton, Florida, and several postal facilities evacuated from their buildings because of the potentially deadly bacteria anthrax. Anthrax in this country is very uncommon. Despite those calming words from the first doctor to diagnose the first deadly case of inhaled anthrax in decades in photo editor Bob Stevens, there were soon a total of 17 more up and down the East Coast and in our nation's capital. I just talked to Leader Daschle. Uh, his office received a letter and uh, it had anthrax in it. There was also an anthrax-laced letter sent to NBC headquarters in New York, where anchorman Tom Brokaw's assistant contracted the skin form of the disease. Both letters were almost identical. September 11, 2001. They read, Death to America, 
death to Israel, Allah is great. One added, have you taken your penicillin today? Investigators combed the offices of NBC and later ABC and CBS when two cases of skin anthrax appeared there. Anytime someone sends anthrax through the mail, it's an act of terror. It's terrorism. And we treat it as an act of terror and terrorism. Terrorism that even infected postal workers and contaminated mail distribution centers in New Jersey and the Washington, D.C. area. By year's end, five people in several states had died, all from the inhaled form of the disease. You will never be 100% prepared for something like that because this is not a natural phenomenon. And so the mystery continues. Despite hopes that an anthrax lace letter sent to Senator Patrick Leahy would yield important clues, preliminary tests turned up no useful leads. Though initial speculation focused on foreign terrorists as the perpetrators of the attacks, experts say evidence increasingly suggests that the anthrax was produced right here in the United States. Gretchen Carlson, CBS News. Turning to medical news tonight, standard treatment for Parkinson's disease is the drug levodopa, but it can also trigger serious side effects. Now doctors say a new drug treats Parkinson's patients with fewer side effects. Here's more in tonight's medical breakthrough. Don Coley is a music teacher. He's been playing clarinet since the fifth grade. Nearly 10 years ago, he noticed his tune was changing. His doctor attributed it to Parkinson's disease and his shakiness. He probably wouldn't have diagnosed it, except for the fact that I was a musician. He was put on the standard treatment levodopa initially. It helped. Then came the drug's side effects. Levodopa causes all this unwanted movement. A recent study shows a new drug, Pramipexil, also called Mirapex, may reduce the side effects of levodopa. Doctors say combine the two drugs and patients may have better disease control with fewer unwanted side effects. Dr. Robert Holloway is encouraged. If you initiated therapy with Pramipexil, there is approximately a 50% reduction in the occurrence of these complications over a two-year period. Don added the new drug to his therapy and noticed an immediate change, not in his music, but in his second love. The, the first thing I noticed was my bowling average went up about 20 pins. Oh, yes. I have the highest average. Nice. If you would like more information, you can write our faxes here at KLST and ask for the Medical Breakthrough segment on New Hope for Parkinson's. With this Medical Breakthrough, I'm David Wagner, KLST News. Medical Breakthrough is brought to you by San Angelo Community Medical Center, where our new MRI suite provides high-quality images and a patient-friendly atmosphere. How that, though? Exactly. We were talking about the snow. <laughs> when was it? However, like a few weeks ago. Yeah. But we were also talking about that cold front coming in this weekend may not be as big as we I thought. I know, exactly. We were hoping maybe, or I was anyway, that we might get some snow since I missed the first round. It doesn't snow that much that often here, but it looks like now the models want to take that cold air back up to the Great Lakes area where they're getting hit very hard right now. And uh, that low is not going anywhere. It doesn't look like it's in the Buffalo area. And uh, we'll show you all that on the jet stream, what that means for us. A very complicated forecast coming up. We'll be with it right back. And welcome back, everyone. We'll check out our radar right now and see what's going on. This looks vaguely familiar to what we've been looking at over the last couple of days. Our strong upper-level system continues to hang in this area. Very broad low pressure, and it's rotating in a counterclockwise fashion in the mid-levels and upper levels of the atmosphere. And as it rotates around, pieces of energy, colder air come back around and come across the Great Lakes. And you know what that means? Lake effect snows. They're getting their biggest hit so far this season. Very uh, huge amounts of snow in the Buffalo, Rochester area on down into Erie, Pennsylvania, then around the Great Lakes into the Lake Michigan and Lake Huron, Lake Superior area. So uh, they thought they had their biggest snowfall a couple of days ago when they got a foot and a half, another two feet today. So incredible amounts. In fact, Buffalo's second all-time 24-hour snowfall ever since we've been keeping records. Around our neck of the woods, uh, we see little pieces of energy coming down our way, but they quickly dissipate as the air is just too stable and too dry for anything to happen with that. Coming aboard, uh, ashore up in the Pacific Northwest, yet another system, but that tends to want to go to the north and northeast, so it looks like it'll be missing us also. Our radar, no. 
Null and void of any shower activity, although this very last shot showing possibly some showers developing around the Freeport area coming in, in off the Gulf. Uh, that is probably a false echo, but something we'll look at uh, could be affecting their weather later on tonight. Here is a good look at that lake effect snow. We call this a fetch right here. Very, very dark green area showing the snow coming all the way across the lake as opposed to crossing the narrow part of the lake. It's going across the very longest part of the lake. Lots of snow up there. Not around here. We'll have our forecast when we come back. First warning weather is brought to you by San Angelo National Bank. Happy holidays from all your friends at San Angelo National Bank. Extra. Here's your town and country neighborhood weather from Ballinger. Currently 43, a high of 59, a low of 25, and only 9 hundredths of an inch for the month of December. So a very dry month as we still try to get out of this drought situation. Now, going back outside, currently 44 at the airport, the dew point 26, giving us a relative humidity of 49%. Winds are out of the west, now at 10. The pressure holding steady and the wind chills at 33. We expect those winds to remain out of the west, southwest, and then northwest briefly tomorrow. The high today, 60. We finally got out of the 50s, 27 this morning, and those are both fairly close to where we should be for this time of the year. Now, looking at the satellite movie, we see once again an interesting jet. Pieces of this uh, jet are breaking off and coming down our way but by the time it gets down here once again get a little bit of spin in it but there's just no depth or instability to this air so the air is basically sinking all around us and a very little if any cloud cover here's the main storm center right up here continuing to spin but it's not going anywhere it needs a kicker something to boot it out it's one of those cutoff lows it's going to remain cut off until the jet stream decides to push it on out a very strong jet stream is indicative of the next couple of days weather and it's going to uh, remain away from us. As you can see, uh, very nice clear skies around our area. The upper level low stretches all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Here's that southwesterly flow and that's going to uh, eventually move on back up into the, the Gulf Coast area and could bring some showers because you see a uh, very uh, high dew points in that part of the state. Right now we've got a stationary front moving across the area. Our forecast for temperatures for the new year are below normal to our northeast normal for here. 31 at Denver right now 50 in Big D, 53 in Del Rio, 55 in Houston. Tonight becoming mostly fair. In fact, uh, another cold evening, about 27 for the overnight low. Northwesterly winds will be light. Then tomorrow the winds pick up a bit and we look for the temperature to warm up to about 67, the overnight low to about 33. That's fairly close to normal, those winds 5 to 15. Your extended forecast, we're going to have to watch this. The jet stream is really going to be the depender here. 10% uh, chance of showers Monday and Tuesday, maybe still of the frozen variety, but right now I'm going to hedge on that just a bit. All right, thanks a lot, Ray. Okay. Coming up in sports, we'll let you know if the Outlaws were able to beat a division rival tonight. And Texas college football teams are getting ready for a big bowl day tomorrow. Hector Ledesma's in next. It's very Outlaws on the road tonight. Yeah, they were hoping to meet the Iguanas for the second time this week. Before tonight, the Outlaws' last road game was in San Antonio. This evening, San Angelo away from home, again in San Antonio. A chance for the guys to make up some ground on the team directly above them in the division. The Iguanas scored two second period goals just 46 seconds apart from each other. And San Antonio runs away with the contest. 5-0 to zero is the final. And the Outlaws drop to 14-14 14 and 14 on the season. Well, both Central Boys and Girls squads began tournament play today. The Bobcats are in Lubbock for the Cap Rock Tournament. They're in action for the first time since uh, the win over Russia's Moscow Tigers. Today's game was, in, uh, was against Austin St. Michael's, and let's see how the Cats did. They fought at the Crusaders 63-55 to is the final. So Central is now 9-6, and, and they'll play tomorrow at noon. Well, let's talk about the Lady Cats now, and the Central's girls team is taking part in the Boswell Tournament over in Fort Worth. Jen Wakefield's team should be without leading scorer Nicole Ayana and point guard Emily Jefferson for the rest of the season. Last week, Ayana quit the team, and Jefferson was cut for disciplinary reasons, and they didn't play, and the team's lost to Ballinger, so let's check out how the ladies did tonight. They lose 55-37 to to Colleyville Heritage. Central's next tournament game is tomorrow at 9 a.m. Well, the Lakeview Chiefs also got back on the court today. They're in Kerrville for the Tyvee Tournament. Lance Montgomery and company are gunning for their first win since they played an Abilene Wiley Tournament three weeks ago. Today, the Chiefs dropped their first game, but the, they bounced back to win their second contest in overtime. Vance Montgomery scores 36 points for the Chiefs, and Lakeview plays Austin Crockett tomorrow at 1 o'clock. 
And also, let's tell you about the Bront Tournament. It gets underway tomorrow morning. Both the boys and girls squads from Bront, Eden, Erie County, and Lorraine will take part. The first game scheduled is a girls matchup between Bront and Eden at 9 a.m. Then the Longhorns and Bulldogs boys teams will battle right afterwards. Well, Texas Tech quarterback Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury will enjoy a homecoming come Saturday afternoon. Kingsbury and his Red Raiders will play Iowa in the Alamo Bowl. And Kingsbury's from the greater San Antonio area. The star signal caller has thrown for over 3,500 yards in leading the Raiders to a 7-4 record. This will be the second time the Red Raiders and Hawkeyes have faced off in the Alamo City. The Hawkeyes won the 1996 bowl game 27-0. But before the Red Raiders take the field over the weekend, the Aggies will play their bowl game tomorrow. and then takes on another Lone Star State team. The Aggies meet TCU in the GalleryFurniture.com Bowl. It's going to be the first time these two old Southwest Conference rivals play since 1995. The Horned Frogs hoping to catch a rusty Aggies team because the Wrecking Crew hasn't played since that loss to Texas the day after Thanksgiving. And the Aggies try to end their year by winning their eighth game of the season. The GalleryFurniture.com Bowl is in Houston. And Major Applewhite makes his first start of the year for the Longhorns. After sitting on the bench the entire year, the senior gets the night in the Holiday Bowl against Washington. And he's Applewhite's going to start because Chris Sims didn't play well at all in that Big 12 title no, game. We don't want to yeah, talk about the, that. <laughs> but it gives the Longhorns a chance to win. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Thanks for being with us. Good night. When you see news happening, just dial Star TV 8 from your West Central wireless phone. Tell is brought to you in part by Park Plaza Nursing Center, 2210 Howard Street in San Angelo.